Hello, so good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're all dialing in from. Uh, Risha and Anthony Broughton from Wilmot Dixon. Uh, we're live today, so there may be a few technical hiccups, so apologies for those in advance. One was our, our audio there, so yes. Anthony's just picked that up. So, uh, yeah, I'm Rhys, Development Director for Revisto, looking after our European team. And uh, I'm joined with Anthony today, one of our clients from Wilmot Dixon, that is going to share his stories and thoughts of uh, some of their use of Revisto and a number of their projects. So maybe you just want to introduce yourself, Anthony, and your, your role at Wilmot Dixon. Yeah, if that's okay. okay. You said my name's Anthony Brophy. I'm a senior designer, uh, digital manager at Wilmot Dixon. So I'm looking to share really what we've been doing. Often asked for ABC magazine. We just approached me to talk about how we're taking out the specialty zone and looking at point players and drone scans and looking at their structured data. So look forward to sharing what we've been looking at and a bit of R&D we're looking at. Perfect. And I think the story with the AEC markets had a lot of exposure, so uh, we'll share that story in the follow-up to this webinar, which has been recorded. And um, yeah, looking forward to telling you more about that today. So just a few housekeeping rules. We'll probably uh, be presenting for around 45 minutes. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions and uh, we'll do our best to answer those at the end of today's session. Just to check that you can hear us okay, uh, it would be good if you could type in the, in the chat log the questions area of Zoom, maybe just where you're you're dialing in from, what country or uh, what company, just so that I can confirm that you can hear us loud and clearly. And uh, once we start seeing those come through, we'll continue. We don't want to speak to ourselves. I, I do that far too often. So if you could just do that, that'd be great. Perfect. So we've got a uh, oh, rather interesting mix of so South Wales, great, which is where we are today. Uh, Digital Wales, I should say, Denmark, Cardiff, great. So you can hear us, perfect. So back to it. So for those of you who aren't aware of Revisto, I'm just going to run through a brief introduction and then I'll, I'll hand over to, to Anthony. So today's title is Taking BIM Out of the Specialist Only Zone, which is a hot topic, I think, for a lot of our clients that we're, we're speaking to. So firstly, just a little bit of an introduction to what Revisto actually is. So our focus is around coordination, collaboration, and communication on construction projects. So, so the, the, the three C's, I suppose. What we're really strong at is enabling better visibility on construction projects for our, our clients. So we bring together data from various sources and bring that into a very user-friendly application so we can start to make smarter decision sooner using our, our issue tracker which becomes your your digital audit trail and single source of truth on projects so my role is uh, development director and there's my, my twitter handle there if you do have any questions feel free to post those up right now just some of our, our clients that are using revisto so a, a really interesting mix right across the, the construction space and you'll see here it, it varies from architectural firms engineering firms construction firms and owners and operators all who are challenged with exactly the same issue and this is sort of the opposite of what you're saying uh, Anthony, about taking bim out of the specialist only zone and the reason for that in my opinion is there's just so many communication streams right now every project team we speak to has various forms of sharing information tracking information different tools and processes which is time consuming and difficult to manage and track what's going on right so you may be printing out drawings marking those up and sending those uh, as emails and as an rfi or a snag report out on site you may be using a, a model viewer to, to look at models and engage. You may be using clash detection management tools. So before you know it, you sit down with your, your staff and you're using in excess of two or three tools to do what Revisto does in one place. So we're streamlining this process, allowing more people to get involved without the necessary technical expertise to use tools like Revit or MicroStation or whatever it may be. And they can really start to engage and make smarter decisions sooner. Because if we are jumping from one application to another, we're simply less productive than we can be. And this is a really interesting report that um, was passed on to me by one of our clients at, by Harvard that says, if you are context switching, you're less productive, probably 40% less productive than you can be. 
which uh, you know we see dollar signs there. We can be more productive, efficient, and that's what Revisto is enabling project teams to do by having a holistic issue tracking tool that can be used throughout the whole project life cycle from conceptual design into construction through into operation. Gamification of BIM is a term I use a lot and something Anthony can explain far better than I with uh, today's title. I think so, we'll find out now. So um, what, we, what I mean by that is we can bring in lots of different file formats, 2D, 3D communication into the Revisto collaboration hub. So it doesn't feel complicated, even though it can be quite a heavy technical space. Revisto gamifies that, so I can jump into a project on, on my tablet, for example, and start to view the model, overlay drawings, add comments, and, and lots of other interesting things as well. So that's enough from me. I've taken out these time today, so I think I'll, I'll hand the mic over. We'll, uh, we'll stop with the video now so you can concentrate on what's being shared on the screen. So I'll just stop sharing my end and uh, hand across to you, Anthony. Let's do that. So if you select share on your screen now, we should see that come through. Perfect, so that's what I'm seeing there. Perfect, so we're using this mic, so if I just pull this. Actually, it's slightly closer to you. Over to you, Anthony. So, seeing if we can still hear me okay, just shut down the mic. Uh, so, as I said before, we set a approach with really off the back of a, an article at BDNA and Magazine, um, taking him out of specialist only zone, and found quite interesting myself that when you're working in these environments, you don't realise what other people don't know about uh, sort of their eyes across. So, it's great for me to actually just share what we've been doing and the, the struggles you've had with some format, so the idea of the point clouds, drone scans, structured data, all sorts. I'm going to cover it all in this brief presentation, and I'll just start uh, a bit overview of the company. Great. So we've got 160 uh, history at the moment. So we're a privately owned contracted interior fit out group. We were founded in 1852, still family run. We're dedicated to leaving a positive legacy in our communities and environment. Some key facts we got on the sheet of report released in 2018. Turnover was 1.323 billion, pre-tax margins of 2.8%, which is great in the current climate, what's going on with other contractors. Uh, repeat business accounted for 67% of our order, and 70% of our turnover was produced via frameworks. And we're the first and only contractor to hold the carbon trust standard. We have over 130 direct employee trainees and apprentices form part of our circuit 1500 people currently employed within business. These are some of the projects we're covering so far in the Wales and the West region, the area in yellow here, so you can see my cursor on the screen, that's the area I manage at the moment. These are some similar projects we've worked on, but all of this is on our webpage, wilmotdixon.co.uk, and you can see all the stories and individual projects and you'll see on there. So, get into Revitzo. So a couple of years ago, I was talking to Reese about the system and my struggle has always been to start with outfitting with the formality of a common day environment. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will come across at the workflow we set up in the, the next slide. So the problem we're really looking to solve, uh, to everybody facing construction at the moment every day, is confusing communication. So we've got multidisciplinary teams across all projects, designers, our supply chain partners, all working in different environments with different software. So what uh, Victor has done for us really is solve the problem with what the slide on the left is showing here. And the imaginary of tools that people use for trying to communicate in the same environment. So Revitzo really is a solution. You see on the right hand picture here, just put an order to the chaos in my mind. Mm. And obviously all of this causes delays trying to communicate with other team members and that increases cost. And the past, what we've been doing, we've always had the idea went off, off from an MEP background for 20 odd years. And I always used to be in Navis Works, in Revit, in AutoCAD, CAD MEP, what it was at the time. And you'd always have a group of people looking over your shoulder and say, well, let me have a look at the model, let me have a look at the model. And it's amazing what insights they could give you, but it wasn't great when they're just over your shoulder communicating. Yeah, I really like this slide. So the present day is the fact that we can have these PCs, um, cloud based systems, which are able to do across different businesses, different offices, different countries, even. 
on different devices, different tablets. It's a fact that we can share and communicate with many different platforms in many different places. That's a, that's a real win for my point of view, the fact we can get information across as many people's eyes as possible. Yeah, gamification. Yeah, that's, that's what good one, yeah. That's a better explanation of mine. Yeah. So that's what I meant. <laughs> so this slide is what I, I, I got into my mind early doors a couple of years ago to try and understand the process myself and how it can interact with a common data environment. So as I know, it is viewpoint for projects. And the idea being that we have Revit, AutoCAD, Navisworks, Libre files that get uploaded. And what we wanted to do is be able to have design managers, construction managers, build managers, estimators, all have one piece of software that could all look at this information in. So we're looking at 2D drawings, 3D models, clash detection ports, people are aware of what Revixo can do with that. I'm not going to cover that in this presentation. So the way I've broken it down is Revixo is the live source work in progress. That's for the information prior to any upload to our formal source, which is the CD school project. So I know now that we've got a lot of work going on with development, so we're integrating with the CDs, and that's great from my point of view. I've been pushing for that because I like the idea that Revitzo's uh, business model really is about collaboration and communication. It's not about becoming a, a document management tool, but it's the center of linking to many different sources of data or documents and drawing them in in a one collaborative environment. So that's why I'm really on board with Revitzo. I just want to check, can everyone hear out the OK? I've moved the, the mic a little closer okay. now. So. Any issues then, just, just let us know. So anyone's okay. aware of the, uh, the BIM Level 2 mandate in the UK, we'll probably understand the idea of what we've got for the CDs about pushing shared and published information. And currently on the CDs, we don't really work in progress, so people work on their own networks. So the idea of Ibiza brings to the table is that every Every day we could be questioning the design team, just give us an update, quick, quick, simple add in with Revit or AutoCAD, where the software they use it, push it into Revit, so update it, and then all of the team, all the supply chain members can see the information up to date. <coughs> so, what I want to share with you at the moment is what we've been doing with um, scan dates. This could be drone surveys, point cloud surveys. So, I'm just going to show you a few details of what we've been doing. So, about a year ago now, We've got a guy internally who's a, a drone enthusiast, shall we say, he's been doing a great job around the business, flying, creating videos, and we're working with to try and understand what the outputs could be. And I remember coming across a format called OBJ in a Revitzo presentation. And I thought, first of all, why not OBJ? So I've got a few <laughs> formats, so I've no idea what that is. And I started Googling it, the rest of it, talking to people, and then talked to our drone guy and the outputs, and it was possible to come out. So, he then sent me some images of the possibilities, which first of all was this one. I thought, well, yeah, it's all right. It didn't really do a lot for me. It's a bit like a molten sugar, to be honest. So I think it was not like I could give you that. But I thought, well, if it was in the bits, I would have done. And then I saw this, and I thought, man. So that was like what they called a scene mesh texture. And I thought, that's obviously the photograph the drone has taken. So looking at it, I then realized that they overlay onto that same image. So that is now the textured mesh captured from the drone in a JPEG file. So I then thought, well, I know we've got the OBJ format you can export, but we requested that, and then we pushed into Revitzo. So that is now the OBJ format that's fully texturized in color of what the drone picked up. And then I thought, well, can we get a Revit model included in the scan to give some sort of context to the environment, which we just done there. And I won't go into the workflow of that because there's a bit meandering to be honest, and for a lot of people, but it's possible, but we're looking at better ways of doing that. So then zoom into there, we then thought, oh, the drone scan is pretty good. There's no accuracy really to a mesh. So so idea you could pick up a bit of information on the roof. But then we thought, look at the context of the building, let's see what we can do with this, the uh, OBJ format. So we realized that we could slice everything. So this being the Revit model, you can see my cursor there, this being the scan, and then the slicing tool with it. So allows us to slice through everything. And then I looked at the idea of going into the Revit model and looking at the texture map from a window. And then that's where, in my mind, it started me thinking of oh, a bit of our ID for how could planning work in the future if we've got sight lines and communication of elevations within the bit set. So I'll come back to that a bit later in the presentation. I've had a few ideas for that I'll share with you. And this is a hospital project we're working on. This is a refurb project. And these areas here, if you see my cursor, these are three plant rooms. So we're looking at there, we did a point cloud scan of these areas. We've got a specialist in to do this because it's, it's a very tight confined space and a lot of height in there, where mm. you see from this one. So this is where we had a very early model, this was. This is developed a lot more now, it's an earlier slide. 
So we've got the design model here showing there are some ducts and the handy units in place, and then we're scanning what's already there in this plan room. So we've then got an overlay of the exact space compared to what's being designed and the potential of issues are going to come across trying to fit them in before the rip out. And the same again there. So we're looking at these ducts connected to AHU here. We've got clarifiers, boilers, pipe work associated, and all this needs to come out. We're saying where the, the problems may uh, need to be resolved. And in here, we then thought, well, we've got the point plate in there now. We've been so enabled us to go into VR, so we want to expand with that. And I, I must admit, I was a bit wary how good it would look, because I thought, well, we've got our close wish done, we're into it, and I was amazed at how good a point cloud can look in Revitzo. It actually looks like it's solid when you're going through there. You don't really understand it being the point cloud a lot of it. So that was something I was looking to push on other projects as well, and, and we've done some other work on projects where we've got students involved with their sort of dome, and that was an exciting experiment as well, seeing how good it can look in there. So, yeah, that's what's worth mentioning that the, the VR element, it, it's plug and play, so getting to that stage wasn't yeah. a, a big task, was it? Well, it's also the fact you can see there I'm literally in a headset and it's quite a bit of silo I've created, just me looking at it. I'm keen to, which I mentioned in the article before, that there's the idea of having a stereoscopic view I've come across before where people have these 3D glass like a smart screen and 3D TV. So it'd be great to be that in the future we could have that screen that you see there with the point cloud in it and the models aligned, sat in a meter room with 10 people. All putting the specs on, having a look and being immersed in it, but still seeing people, so it's almost an augmented look to it. Mm -hmm. So you can still communicate, but still understand where you are in space, get proportions. That's something I'm looking to experiment with in the future as well. And this is a project in Pontypri, it's a redevelopment for a shopping centre. This includes a library, gym, and a cafe in this lovely looking building here. That's why I'm going to focus this presentation on now what we did. So we did a point cloud scan. Which this is just sort of captured by default. What we're focusing on was this area here, the wrap on the billion envelope. So, this, believe it or not, can, has 6,000 shingles that need to be cut and installed on here. And the VIX are enabled us to understand with the point cloud, we could unwrap the envelope. So, we go back to here and understand where we've got timbers being picked up and the window openings here. We go back again looking at the structural frame. This is a great benefit to discuss the design managers and the, the poor world supply chain member, I should say, who's actually going to build this. How, so, how many? Six thousand shingles around these holes. Eh? And what we we're looking to understand is, are we going down the right path? Are we accurate enough on the build on site that we've got windows in the right place and that the, the bend is as designed? And to be honest, we're pretty much there. It actually ended up showing a robust method for us to say, what. Well, we have to continue along this line because we're getting right. Yeah. So it's a great decision to do that. And this is a famous music venue in Bristol. It has performance spaces. It's got two halls and some cellars. And in this view here, you can see I've got three point clouds. We've got the facade, we've got a hall in here, and this is the main hall. This is massive. So if we look at this, we, this is my first venture into point cloud scanning myself. So I went with other members of the team and we hired a like your RTC 360, so which is my preferred like method at the moment, purely okay. because it, it does um, registering the files live on site, which saves me time registering the files when I get back. So that meaning if people aren't aware of that, I'm doing it myself, I'm no expert. Yeah. We scan the environment, you see it on an iPad, it's an iPad Pro you use, you see the scan come up live, it's a simple version of it, and then it, you press the button to say, I think it was auto register, something like that. It's basically aligning the scans. Whereas normally you have to do that manually and start sliding around in your hand, which could take three, four minutes to align. Whereas right. it auto matches it, just looks at sorry, now it's in there that looks at it, so it does it it's brilliant. So that saved a lot of time on site. So I thought, well, let's jump in, try a lot to jump in with things and we'll see what I know. mistakes might make and see what happens. So well, a bit like this, so you've got to jump in and get a nice exactly. So that's a very early scan we had. Another one going around the building, it always makes me laugh with these. I was thinking to myself, oh no, something, and you realise then we're through the demolition works. And where they're sprayed, this was coming out, and these were staying in, and they're all over the site that they're bashing their legs. So this is before to coach the well, site. So the scan helped us understand what we're looking to work with. And this is where a simple solution for point players to me is about it's always been a specialist thing. I mean, I no way think that I can do any better job at scanning than a specialist because there are things that you can do that I don't I'm not even aware of the yeah. different skill sets. So from my point of view, what we ought to do is capture what we had in a point player and understand what we can and can't do within the route. 
environment. And this has helped the team understand what they're being handed over and the tolerances we're working to. So for this, we got the facade scanned and then we brought in the model to him and aligned it. And we soon realized how good a job the modelers have done on these projects. So hands off to the architects on this one that we've done because it's pretty much bang on and they're scanning yeah. and put their issues on this. Oh, well. So when we go through now, this is another one of the halls. So you can see here, even this detail is modeled. They had a point cloud scan. This is, this is a traditional contract. So they had it scanned before and then modeled from the scans, I believe, which are the aqueous of it. I don't see another way they could have got such a good model. Mm -hmm. And all of this is a scan overlaid with the two matching up. So then what we wanted to do, I like to experiment with it. So I've got, I've got a point cloud, I've got a model in the bit. So can I slice that like I did with the, the OBJ? And the answer is at the moment you can, but you get this ghosted. And I think the development team are looking at that to maybe just clip that a bit clearer, but it's not a big issue for us. It's just that you clean it, we could actually clip it like that. And I've seen the questions come through, so the, the guys are, are looking at as we speak. So, And here again, this is the main hall, which is absolutely massive. So this is the model uh, uploaded to Revit, so from a Revit environment, and the steel work, which is secondary steel work at this point in time. And then we allow the point cloud to overlay into that to encase it. And then from this point cloud, we then got the team to look at it. And we've got questions raised there, which is pretty good from the, the construction manager and the build manager on the site. They were questioning, like, can we use this point cloud to measure the space we actually have to enter the model to then understand the volume of scaffold we need to pull up? Because this place is absolutely full of scaffold at the moment. You can imagine because the height we're working at. Yeah. So then we took simple measurements off it and we got that and we got the right volume of uh, scaffolding. So it's a nice simple solution for these scans. scan. So I'm keen to always have a reason for doing something. I don't want to just be, these are point cloud scan, in the so I have no reason whatsoever there's an actual use for it and we're capturing data. And that's a bit back to the model office then. Then what I want to show you is what we're doing with the 360 images. So this again, the, this is the Ponte Pre development, the library during cafe, multi use building. And this is direct from Revit we've got shown in here. And then what we do, people aren't aware of Revit, so I'm not sure if you're all users, not, you can slice the models. These are the 3D view and the plan view sliced down. And these are stamps we've placed. We've got a 360 stamp, you know, it's a 360 image just attached to it, so it's just logical. That's what the stamps are called. Mm -hmm. And in here, then, what we've done, we've got the stamps put in the locations that we want to capture images, where you can see on the 2D drawing here. And then Gareth's done a great job here going to the site. And we were wondering whether to pre populate these first, but Gareth had this great idea coming up with going around the building and only able to turn left, which worked out perfect. So <laughs> you can try that as a concept for speeding up doing 360 scans. Because so, you can actually place these and go around randomly and update the image to suit. But he went, kept turning left, and then never went back in himself. So he covered every room, knowing they can never go into a pool. So that's the concept of <laughs> <before> myself. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> and Simple, but effective. There. That's the 360 image. Obviously, it's not enabled oh, well, in here, but that that's around the 360 look all the way around. And that's what all the shingles will be attached to the zinc symbols to go into that after. This is all the timber. It actually looks great as timber, to be honest. That's really awesome. And this we've got then 360 camera looking at the issues. So we're looking at so it's almost a um, testing method, really. The 360s we want to capture as uh, information on progress you could use it for, but also understanding what we can see on the roof, like in here now. So, We've captured stuff on there, understanding there's any issues. So, our health and safety guys can look at that. If they spot any issues on there, and maybe visit the site because they can't be everywhere at the same time. So, there's a lot of sites to cover. Yeah. So, we're looking at potential 360s helping them. Also, again, there, we're looking at the idea of capturing what goes on behind walls because there'll be partitions going up there. So, we're capturing as a conduit down there with some platelets. And I think that's going to be great. It's <coughs> probably something we'll look at in the future. So all of the all of this then has been fed back to anybody involved in the Revisto project in yeah. the office that hasn't had to attend yeah. the site, right? So I've got access to this. Yeah. So, I mean, that helps me because since I started with this four years ago, I've had very little time to actually get out to the sites. I enjoy being on the sites yeah. because of them. And you get better with some instruction, but from them, we do background. So, to me, I'm getting a lot of learning myself just by having three sixty captures, looking at the issues they have with construction sites. And, the build order and the sequencing of it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been enlightening to me as well. I thought those cameras are really useful. It was the, what was the name? Yeah, we the, used the Rico Theta Z1 is the latest one. Hard to get hands on the latest one. I, I tried and I've got the Z, the, the previous version. The V. The V. Yeah, yeah, we did do that. It's just that the Z1 has a lot better um, pixel oh, high okay. resolution. Oh, well. So we found we could zoom in more, get more clarity. So it's probably worth waiting for the Z1, I would say. Mm -hmm. 
great comment, sir. This is a score we have. This is a three buildings we're doing for this project for 1,200 people, so including sport pitches. This is really showing another way of the 360s and the use case for them. So in Vitsa again, we can slice the model, people are aware of that. That's what I think you've got hypermodern, aren't you? If you're slicing through that 2D drawing attached to it. Yeah, well, this I think everyone calls it slightly different things, but you know, this again has been available in Revisto for six years to be able to overlay drawings on models of 3D data, which could be models, scan data, you know, it's about understanding the, the two in, in the same context. So you know, there various names of it. So then just zoomed into there to show the highlight that we've done the same again. So this is this is our first pilot project actually. And uh, Dave McCarthy was doing these ones here. They're a great idea. Let's start using the camera, capture as much as we can on the score for handout. So every one of these 360 is a 360 image. We go into that, that's probably the most boring slide you've ever seen in a presentation, with literally a 360 stamp shown on a wooden door in Ritzo. But what it enables us to do is see these 360 images on the right hand pane here. We can go into there to get a clear view of that fire door. Now, the fire door, we have a lot of things to check off on the installation. So, a dimension view, we've got to check there's a, a fire label on it, check that the door leaf is consistent, got a four mil gap around it. Check the intermessive seals are in place. If they're not, it's not a fire door. It comes from being legislation and building rates. We've got to check the seals are continuous and free from damage. And mainly what we're seeing in that phase is you can check the door closure that's attached correctly to the door frame and not the architrave. So the idea there, we've got it conceived for the door and not this architrave, I think. So there's like a QD checklist we have internally in our quality department going on the site. So we have to take photographs traditionally, put them in a report. And we're looking at methods now, maybe the 360 camera can help with that. You know, actually have more benefits being the reporting in the Vitso that they all see and have eyes on. There's only look at people's vision of what can be done with the quality department. It's a sort of save aftercare, really, isn't it? And another term for that 2D overlay on the 3D models, Dave, highlighted is 2.5D. So uh, yeah. we're going to pinch that <laughs> one, Dave. <laughs> and this is another use case for where we go back to my favorite subject, fire doors and doors in general, because there's a lot of information around the door. So we're looking at using it on the tablets just to highlight the fact that all of these can be done and interactive with the tablets on the iPad. So this is a job we're looking at on the university campus that required barcodes and every asset. So we went around to that building, captured it under BAR, stamped it into every stone for barcode. And then uh, on site, the photograph was taken of the barcode. That was then synced to the project. And then whilst I was back in the office within the Revit model itself, we could update each of those doors with the barcode that was relevant to the information that was getting fed back from site. So that site data coming back to the office and instantaneously and we could put it into it. So that worked really great. Now, my favourite subject, I'm a bit of a geek with this. I love structured data and that's why I keep banging on about it in the business when people look at me in blank faces a lot of times. I'm going to continue to learn champion what needs to be done. So traditionally, a lot of the design tools are out there at the moment for managing the data from ISC files. So it's open BIM, so I'm keen to use in the business. Understand it doesn't have to be native to the software, but other people can use it. So in here, I'm just showing an example of a door that we're tracking through within the sort of a code schema. So therefore, we're saying it's a structured data set within code schema <coughs> itself through ISC. So what you see sleeping here is the ISC model and the data associated, and it comes under these tabs. So we've defined presets, the column. I won't go into the detail of that, but it's basically a nice high-level title to form data on that. And the way I always look at IFC file points and cells is if you was to put a Revit model on this software, you'd have a lot of dump data, the necessary data, but useful in other people's minds. So what we're doing is structuring the data and filtering out the stuff we don't want to see from a model view definition we call it in the industry in this IFC format. So we're only seeing what we want to see. So I put it under presets to clarify so we can view it. Same in Navisworks, the same model, the same data, the same door viewed in there under the tabs. But all of these solutions we've been using for the last few years. Uh, first of all, I say one of them is very expensive, or one of their names, one of them because it's part of the suite. And they're all a bit of a nightmare to manage from an IT perspective when you're looking at laptop specs and people come into the business and old architecture machines, versions of software you have to keep up to date with. So then what we've got there is a nice clean version that's cloud based in Vitzo. And so what you can see here is the way that Vitzo used the same presets on the list here. Nice and open. So I've opened a couple of them. You can see how we view the data. Obviously, hyperlinks are activated, so you can go and view the data on the products, the manufacturers, and all the rest of it. So 
this, in my mind, has the potential of becoming what we're always talking about in the industry, in the, in the or stage two, as you should call it. The fact that we've got a model, 2D drawings, it could be reports associated with it, we've got hyperlinks to other information sites we could go to, websites, etc. So really, it's almost encapsulating the whole concept of the aim, because it's the model, the information associated to it, pictures, reports, all sorts of we're going to explain with the concept of doing that because you obviously do the executable file. Mm -hmm. But what I uh, might have to, okay, I'm not sure I told me a name for an executable file because it's export IFCs. But theoretically, you could do an executable file and export IFCs from it to then go to other packages and get it from. So whether that's possible, then you can uh, export it from the Rosetta project an EXC or an IFC. So you could um, do that in an executable file that you save offline if you do it to yeah. oh, that's export. Yeah, export that out. Like that. So that's the way of viewing structured data. I think I remember speaking to the team that the ability to do that where you've federated a model in Revisto to format from various places and then spit out an IFC from that's quite the... Uh, yeah, we can do that with our license version, yeah. We'll do yeah. the next few well, still works, yeah. Good, good question to ask. It's good to encapsulate all the information and hand over a client to look at that and actually interact with the model with the data and sort of live and talk to it. Mm -hmm. So potential-wise, this is where I go into what we're doing with the code information itself now. So we usually we to actually populate the data using Navis works for the data and you see the clue sheet down the bottom is the same information that we're looking at from a simple draw before so we'll populate in there and that forms the Excel sheet in the workbook that people are requesting. <coughs> then as part of the meeting we went to with Revitsa and their little workshop we did query there and is there any potential then that Revitsa could do the same thing. So at the moment we can get ICs in there, we can view the structured data which is great, but there's no output. So I know there's work going on the back of the roadmap of what's possible with that, so I'll leave that for me to explain if you want to do, but from my point of view, it's just the fact that we can get information into a structured Excel format mm -hmm. for whatever people are requesting for us. Yep. Conversations on going. Yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another one that's a sort of potential, because there's a thing I've been thinking about myself, and the idea of simply when I was in this model in the bit, so I looked at it and go, oh, it's a potential list of plans. So we looked at the planning process and decision notices, consulting replies, interested party replies, the plans. And we've got this idea now, we've been to experiment with this for the last few weeks now, that we get a stamp associated here. So these stamps, so this is DOC that we cut off on there, so it's doc. And then we can apply the information in there. So that's one method. Then I thought the best method would be that information can be updated and we've got to keep uploading stuff from a CD to here because it sit in the CD, it's formal information. So then look at the idea of these buttons we created, which is then the CD. So then we'd open it up on a product CD here. We get a link to our CD, and then that would show us all the documents under that heading. So each of these links would take us to viewpoint in this instance to get a report day of the information we're loading there. And if this is updated, this is all automatically opened up from this link. So let's mm -hmm. just look at potential uses of planning. I mean, Construction's been sort of disrupted that made what we're trying to do. And I think it's a, it's a shame in the way that planning maybe is not doing the same thing. I think we need to be in sync because planning takes so long to get information through. And I think maybe modernizing planning is the way it's been going. So I'm no expert in the planning process, I should add. So I'm looking at maybe talking to these people and understanding where things make change in the future and possible ways of working. It's making them available, you know, what the benefits of utilizing technology and how yeah, we can exactly. have them speed up the yeah. process, right? Yeah. So. so here we've got. What probably the most traditional method you could do is just up uploading the PDFs and the drawings, etc., and the reports and the letters to this. And this is where I just wanted to show this idea because I was looking at the documents video last night that Brett had created. Yeah. And he, he put into mind quite clearly that how clever this could work and the idea that these folders we've created here would be a link directly to our CDE yeah. brought in, but still have the ability to hypermodel, we call it, or they call it 2.5D overlay and then put that information together that's then automatically managed in the CD. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be great if we've got one product doing all the management of the documents and the approval process, but then links into here automatically, and then we can see that and overlay that. So yeah. we've got work in progress, and we've got the CD version we can compare the two. Exactly. I think that's brilliant. I'm glad you watched that uh, talk by Brett. Yeah, it's good video, yeah, good video. And then potential then, just uh, ending where we are now, the idea that it's potential from our point of view, we've been looking at health and safety, and you know, Vitso is enabling a lot of people to see stuff, so health and safety is quite a specialist skill and understanding, there's a lot of knowledge in people's heads, so what we need to do is get them heads in front of the screens, 
or the tablets to understand what we're looking at on site. So we've gone down the idea of looking at the ISO standards for the types of uh, signs required that you'd see on site. Because I like the idea that we're not saying we're just going to do an exclamation mark there, which I know a lot of people can do, but I've, I've got to push that a bit further and say, if I'm on the site and I see a sign on the stand, it's a lot of being a bit so much, and to make the leap. Mm -hmm. So graphically, we're looking at the same information. Yeah. There's, just, there's no sort of a scope gap then, what we're looking at. So there's the idea then we can click on that, and then we're looking at this, which obviously the cool. has at the moment on the data so we'll do it. So this is based on a warning for forklift trucks and other industrial vehicles. So that's a symbol required in the ISO, and that's what we're looking at as the risk. And then you can score it, and obviously that can do a joke set of all sorts of risk So there's a lot of potential for that. And then at the end of that, because we're saying our digital platform moment of collaboration is the white tool for the white task to help make better decisions. Great. I'd like to thank Banksy for his image. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you, Anthony. That was uh, always really informative and uh, interesting to see how you do the team are, are pushing uh, the digital boundaries quite hard. So um, that's great. So for me, uh, I'm always learning from, from our clients like Anthony, how they're using our digital collaboration tool for things like potential in planning and a lot of the things we just discussed in, in today's webinar. So with that in mind, we, we've got a bit more time to take questions. We could jump into a project where you've actually shown a lot more of the Rivers to application in your slides. I think that's fine. We can do that whilst we're, we're waiting for questions. So let's, let's do that. So if, uh, if you do have any questions, then like before, simply put those into the chat log and, uh, and we can take those now. Myself and Anthony will then do our best to try and answer those. And Dave is with us as well, Dave McCarthy, so Dave can, can help as well. I've, uh, we'll just wait for those to come through. And I'm really just showing on screen at the moment the idea I had for the planning concept, the fact that we've gone from this view, we can walk through that model, go through the window, and the whole thing's interactive. We can go and scroll through the entire building there and have a look through. So, this is a tool for me, it's brilliant. And everybody can do this, it's simple to navigate. I've actually got photos, I didn't want to share on mine because obviously privacy and children, actually, but my, my son and my daughter use the tablet all the time. It's the most common thing I find when I go in there. They've got the iPad, the room a bit, so going through models, especially this one, because I like the fact that well, it's a picture of the sea, it's a picture of the hill, so they like to go and fly around the building. <laughs> and if, um, if I happen to be online as well at the same time as Anthony, so what, what we can do then is have these interactive. Uh, camera share sessions we call them so I can start to, to navigate through the, the project the facility and as I'm doing that Anthony can see on my on his screen in real time exactly what it is I'm looking at so there's a slight refresh I can see uh, refresh rate issue there but it's really smooth but I actually on my tablet so let's switch the video back on for now and then you could probably see that as well so I'm starting to navigate through on my tablet quickly and easily. And Anthony can see what I'm looking at in real time and I can request control his end and then do the same thing and show me around. So, so there we go, I'll click okay. And I'm now watching Anthony's screen in real time. So we're simply sharing the camera position here and we can have multiple people in the session at once on a desktop and an iPad and a VR headset and then start to look at the comments, questions, the stamps. So for me, that's what I found really interesting is our, our issue tracker where we're asking questions, managing clashes, putting in stamps for health and safety is quite a versatile tool where it can be used for a number of different tasks. So through design, into construction and through into operation, coming back to my earlier slide about the, the potential use there. So we can see a couple of questions have come through. So I will start to read those out, Anthony, and you and Dave can tell the rest. Right, let's have a look. Can you expand on pushing site data back into Revit from Revisto? Right, yeah, the idea that it's a simple solution now. Uh, Dave was out on the job site with a tablet that he predefined some stamps in the areas on 2D drawings. So then you open up the stamp on the iPad, you can take a photograph on the iPad of the barcode on the door, upload that to the stamp, sync that, and then I see that back in the office in my Revit, so on that project, 
I have the information in the photograph of the barcode itself, and I type that into the parameters required in the Revit model. Just about a very simple photograph gives me the data I need. I input that into the Revit model, save that, and it's gone. And uh, I suppose to expand on that point in a slightly different way is if somebody's positioned a stamp in the Revisto project, if somebody does need to go back into their authoring tool, which could be Revit or Tecla or something else, Archigad, we've got a dynamic switch back where you double click on that stamp or the issue and that will take the person directly to that drawing sheet or 3D view in that, in that model. So uh, do all of your colleagues have access to Revisto? Yes, if they ask the business. Yeah. If they ask you nicely, right? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm keen that the, the, the whole manager of what I'm saying in this, this presentation is the fact that I don't want them to be a specialist thing. And I, I always try my best to communicate things simply. I'm not the best at that. I'm more technically minded and I struggle with probably simplicity of communication. But Rubitzo has helped me with that to understand that other people can see it. It's about getting in front of design managers, QSs, estimators, even admin. We've got people doing social value ads in the schools and the universities that are sharing this stuff with and they're going to VR and Bitso and the kids are loving it. And in fact, the kids are picking up an Xbox controller on the big screen and using the Bitso as being an iPhone for me because they're far better than I am. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I've always used a sort of analysis of workflow on a keypad, but even in Bitso, I still do the walk and analysis work scenario with my, my navigation tool. And so the Xbox is great. More coming through. So, yep. Yeah. So please now just um, ask away in the chat log and uh, now we've got Anthony's attention, feel free to ask easy questions only, obviously. So I'll keep reading through. What are the benefits of modeling to that level of detail if you have a point cloud? Benefits of modeling to detail. I want to write. Benefits really from our point of view is understanding the map such on that project. If you didn't have that level of detail, you wouldn't know where we are with the knocking down, the demolition works. So when we've got that verification is all yeah, it's the fact that we can measure accurately what the expectations were for the project and then we put the point cloud in to say what the reality of that expectation is. So then the client is getting a great level of detail in their model understands the view and now imagine the project that we're working on they want to be so it'd be a bit of a showcase for the project as well so i say we don't expect that on every project but i think if you've got a point cloud created and you're going to model from it then you get that accuracy anyway and i suppose the decision to make then is that required but then i'll say for the client's purpose on that project then it was yes got it like i said traditional contract we weren't involved with that time that's what we handed over so we weren't involved in that so i suppose you can be being able to Bring in that point cloud and design based on the existing conditions is great benefit for the designers yeah. as well. So I mean, we've basically got a model that's telling us what we should be at at handover stage for that design stage where and the point cloud is where we are now on the site. So more scanning at different points in time will give us a different concept of that. Somebody likes your ideas as well. So the hyperlink stamps to the CD information with great potential. Can this work with any CDE? So um, I should so probably take that one. Yeah, um, <laughs> not yet, but we're working on it. So again, this is something um, Anthony, Anthony and I discussed uh, a little while ago. I think just after you uh, persuaded us to push forward with point cloud support, is linking Revista to your, your common data environment. So the good news is we've already started that piece. Uh, we now support Procore, uh, some other tools like Box, we're just embarking on integration with uh, BIM 360 Docs. Next then is focusing on what um, CD we should support next. So it depends what our customers are asking for. Uh, I did put up a poll on Twitter to ask what CD are you using because there, there are many of them. Um, so it depends on priorities really and timing. But we do have a very, very busy roadmap with lots of exciting uh, features coming. And on that point, I should say, and hopefully you can back me up on this, Anthony, is our development roadmap is very active and customer driven. So, uh, you know, we're listening to our customers and developing what, what we can to give them a better experience using Revisto. Well, i say from my point of view, that's what I know so much from Revisto. I think we're very out of our business and you listen to the customer and every week we work with the concept or methods we'd like to work, we looked at, listened, mm -hmm. it's gone through a vote a lot of time, but other people think, yeah, great idea, and we developed some ideas. Exactly. And the slack of talking directly to developers as well, I think that's been great from my point of view. Yeah. So yeah, Anthony is uh, as a key client for us is um, 
part of that development chat that we have internally presented at our premium user group in London a couple of weeks back. So got some insights that, uh, that I can't share today, unfortunately, uh, into you know, our roadmap for the next 12, 24 months. So there's a lot there and the majority of that is based on customer demand. So in 360, please. So yep, yeah, that's next. Uh, we'll take maybe one more question. Um, if I was waiting for that, if you do have any questions, then feel free to send me an email. And if they're for Anthony, I won't share your email address. Anthony, I'll just direct them to you. If people do um, have questions, they can ask me, and I'll forward those on to yourself. So if I stop sharing your screen, unless there's anything else you wanted to show. Excuse me, that's a good idea that we could show some. Oh. Oh, of course, yeah. So if I leave the people main out here, let's go to uh, just to show the fact that how it works. Just to prove that it's not any sort of uh, smoke and mirrors in the bit 360s, it actually enables them to So we're so looking at the doors, looking at the iron longer, the rest of it. And what's always great when you look at the 360s is we're focusing, say, on that door, but we capture other information. So you're going there for one reason, to capture information for a door, say. But then we're capturing information on progress and science as well, just by default, mm. being a 360 camera. So the benefits really of 360 are massive. And an understatement would be one more there. I think that's great. And that's the way, that's the potential of what it's, it's finding other uses and people to view that information and have a, a more valid input than I would say. Got it. So I suppose coming in, maybe a couple of questions from me while was uh, filtering through those. What's the Which project have you had the most amount of data in, or how, how many different data sets have you had in one Rubisto project? So models, drawings, 360 photos, what I mean, it, it would to be give some concept into because it, it all looks great. Venue. I, I mean, I've pushed, I, I literally tried to break software, so I've pushed three point phase into that, and it's a very level, high level detail, which people have noticed in the Revit model, and we've got strips of steel work into it as well. So, I mean, that's looking, um, that's got to be memory wise. Well, I think that, that project you just looked at, I could see a drone survey, texture surfaces, a Revit model, 360 yeah, photos. Yeah, that's one of the ones. I mean, the, the one we've got the user menu, it's, it's, it's massive. I mean, you do notice a little bit of difference on that compared to other projects, but it's, it's nothing that stops you from working in it. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, I've found now lessons learned, the point I'd probably advise people. Um, we have a workflow at the moment where I've got a Revit model. I bring in the point clouds, like the one I showed you with the facade and the different calls. They're all in one file, I push them. And then when I've been working on other projects, I realize what's better is to align the point cloud within your Revit model from the right coordinates, save as another project, only have the point cloud in it, and save three versions of that point cloud and push them into their own file formats that are already aligned to the project, because then you can have three point clouds in. Project, but unload the others, you can hide them off, so they're not changing the view, and that works much faster. So it's just less alert than that, really, the fact that we've gone down the path of pushing three point clouds into one very project, whereas really you can align them all, save the project three times, remove the very project itself, and only have the scans, and then upload them through the, the admin. That works brilliantly. So there's a lot there, and um, Dave is putting up some notes there. One of the projects had over 18 models, 2000 yeah. plus 360 photos. So I suppose it, what I'm trying to get across is. You can bring in and back to today's title of that sort of taking BIM out of the specialist only zone models, drawings, 360 photos, reality, reality capture, um, and deliver that to somebody on a tablet so they don't need these various tools, uh, expensive hardware, multiple days of training. You can invite them to the Revisto project, and within how long does it take you now to get somebody up to speed with Revisto here for the first well, time, would you say? I mean, to be honest, when you show people, I think I mean, 15 to 20 minutes, they can fly through the model and slice it, and then it's probably an hour's training to get them to just do what goes on. I think if anybody's had an hour's simple training, they can fly through, slice up the model, look at data, and then it's where you want to go with that. Yeah. So I would say two hours max. Well, it's, it's just a cause of down. I mean, I think you know, I, when I speak to people for the first time, simplicity is key. And if it's simple and easy to use and people can make use of it, yeah. then use will grow, which is what we've seen with uh, uh, you know, your colleagues here. So, all right. Well, as you can see, the team here are very busy building lots of interest in uh, facilities, buildings, schools, um, in music halls, you name it. So I don't want to take up more time than I've asked for today. So with that, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for spending the time with me today. And uh, thank you all for, for dialing into today's webinar. 
you will receive a link thanking you for joining and uh, a link to the recording as well in the next uh, next couple of days if there are any questions around what you've heard today if you'd like to try and revisit yourself then simply get in touch uh, or if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to see in our next webinar we, we'd love to hear them so without further ado thank you very much for watching thanks for presenting guys and uh, we'll, we'll see you soon take care thanks a lot okay.